Okay, I'm going to do something a little bit different today. I would like to invite our kiddos and anybody from the youth group who might want to come up as well to come over here and sit with my friends Pam and Andrew. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. You guys... Youth group, there's some clipboards for you if there's not enough spots, if there's not enough spots at the table. Youth group, makes, make uh, some room for the children if there's not enough spots. Okay, grab clipboards if you don't have a spot at the table, okay? And you guys can just kind of sprawl out wherever you want. Doesn't matter where. Okay? There's markers behind you if you can't reach the ones that are on the table. And you should all have a piece of paper, too. If you need more paper, we've got that as well. Okay. Wow, well, watch your head. Chris Hoffman had that happen one time. It was ugly. <laughs> all right. So eyes on me real quick, my friends. Here's what we're going to do. Yeah, we've got a couple of spots over here if anybody wants them. Um, I'm going to read from the Bible. And then I'm going to give the message, the sermon, like usual, but as I'm talking, and as maybe some folks out here might be talking too, I want you to just draw, scribble, maybe even write words based on what you hear. Whatever comes to mind, I want you to draw that, okay? And if you mess up, there's no such thing. It's all good, okay? And if you draw so much on the paper that you want to start over, do something new, we got more paper to keep doing that, okay? Do what now? And there's also a front and a back. And there's a front and a back. Thank you. There's a front and a back. Okay? If you get squirmy and you need to go sit with your parents, you are more than free to do that. But I want to invite you to stay up here for the duration. This is your time. This is your space. Okay? But most important, listen. Okay? Just listen. Okay? We're going to try to keep quiet, listen, and create. So here we go. This is a reading that comes from the Gospel of John, and this is a part of our Christmas story. So hear these words. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through Him, and without Him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in Him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world he was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after, after me ranks ahead of me because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God it is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. And this is the word of God for the people of God. God is still speaking. Thanks be to God. Shall we pray together? Word and words, O oh God. Among the many words, find us with your living word of Christ. Amen. All right. Well, Happy New Year. Let's try that again. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Now we're getting somewhere. Of all the things that happened over this past year, I'm grateful for so many things. And one of the things that I'm very grateful for 
is having the chance to go to the Festival of Homiletics in Denver in May, where we had all these different preachers and speakers that were there, Brian McLaren, Otis Moss III, and uh, Yvette Flunder, and William Willimon, and so on and so forth. It was, it, it was like, like Comic-Con for comic book fans, except for you can't really call it uh, preaching con, because that's kind of <laughs> disparaging to the craft. But one of the people that spoke was Diana Butler Bass, and Diana Butler Bass speaks about all these different matters of spirituality and faith and how things are kind of changing. And one of the things that she said to us is, perhaps religion is changing because the nature of its deepest question is changing. Where is God? Where is God? That's an interesting question given the year that we just had. In a year remembered by a racially motivated mass shooting at a church in Charleston, South Carolina, and many other mass shootings throughout the year. In a year remembered by an ongoing civil war in Syria that is producing the greatest humanitarian crisis that this generation has ever known, with people being displaced by the millions from their homes and dispersed all over the world. A year that is remembered by police body cameras and cell phone cameras capturing the shooting deaths of young black men. And our responses being informed by apathy that leads to conclusions that might justify those deaths versus compassionate conclusions that might lead to ways to change those oppressive systems that perpetuate their deaths. A year that is remembered by terrorism that leads us to fear our Muslim neighbors even more now than in the weeks after 9-11. A year remembered by all of this darkness. Where is God? It's a good question. Now, the pastor of the church that I first served would start all of his sermons by saying this prayer, Words and word, O God. Among the many words, find us with the living word of Christ. Now at Christmas, we celebrate the birth of Christ, Emmanuel, God with us, but we also celebrate the birth of the word made flesh. So when it comes to that deepest question of religion, where is God, we might ask, where is the living word of Christ? And to get to that question, we might need to ask, what does that look like? What's it, what's it like? This living word of Christ. So let's do this. Words and word. There are words that distract us from the living word of Christ. Words that tear down, words that destroy. But there are lots of affirming words that point to the living word of Christ. Words that help us understand what that word of Christ is all about. So, let's share some of those words. Think about this for a minute. What is Jesus? What is Jesus? I'm not asking who is Jesus and getting into all the historicity and stuff. I'm asking what is Jesus? If God is the Word made flesh in Christ Jesus, if Jesus is the embodiment of God, then what is Jesus? Think about how he carried himself in this world, who he associated himself with, what he prioritized, what he did, and then tell me, what is Jesus? I need your help on this for a second. It can be a word, it can be a sentence. Okay, I'm going to grab this for later because we're going to do this again, but these are good one words. Love, compassion, peace, justice, empathy, hope, thank you, kindness, there was another one I missed, patience, thank you, forgiveness, power. Power, conversationalist, these are great. Words, there's another one. Acceptance, thank you. Grace, these are great, thank you. Compassion, justice, empathy, there was one more. Courage. Breaker of stereotypes. There was another one. Recognition. Teacher. Revelation. 
Love. Say it again. Sermon? Sermon. Servant. Servant. Thank you. Servant. Okay. These are good. And the scripture this morning reminds us, as the light of the world, so we have light, life, and that big one, love. All these different words. Hang on to these. Let's keep listening to each other here. So this other speaker that I heard at the Festival of Homiletics, this guy named uh, John Philip Newell, and he's big into Celtic spirituality, if you've ever heard of this stuff. In Celtic spirituality, he refers to the Word of God as the mystery of God, capital M. And he said this, we need to find ways of sharing our intimate experiences of the mystery, for we are one. It is through one another that we will know more of the life, capital L, that flows within us all. It is through sharing our fragments of insight that we will come to a fuller picture of the one who is at the heart of each life. I want to say that last part one more time. It is through sharing our fragments of insight that we will come to a fuller picture of the one who is at the heart of each life. So you see what we're doing here. It's by sharing our insights together this morning that we're coming to a fuller picture of the light of Christ that's at the heart of each of our lives. Even with what's being shared right now. And the more in touch we are with the light of Christ within us, then the more we can see God among us. So now let's do something else. We've mentioned a lot of words, a lot of abstract concepts as our artists are plugging away up here, but we need to see them. Because if we can't see them, then all the stuff that we're talking about, then the light, the life, the, the love of God are, are just words. So something else, Barbara Brown Taylor says, the moment someone acts on the words they say, the words become flesh and live among us so we can see their glory. And it's the same thing with the living word of Christ. Jesus took everything that God was all about, all these words to describe Jesus, all these concepts to define God, rather, and he embodied them. He demonstrated them. He lived them out so that all would see the glory of God. So, let's develop a fuller picture of God now. This is where I need your help a little bit using this. Okay? I want you to share your insights about where you have seen the light and the life and the love of God this past year. I want you to give me a few examples. So, in doing this, in 2015, where did you see compassion, justice, light, life, love, these things that we're talking about? Where did you see God embodied? There might be a few people who want to speak, so let's try to keep them brief, but I just want... Quick things. Where did you see God embodied over 2015? Say it again. The food pantry. Food pantry. Is this thing on? Good deal. Thank you. Go for it. I spent Christmas in Charleston, and we went by the church. There mm. wasn't a service at that time, but they still have barricades out in front, mm. and they bar auto traffic on Sundays because so many people still bring flowers and remembrances great to hear. We don't hear about that in the news. Thanks. Where have you seen light, love, life embodied in 2015? I'm going over here and I'm going to cut back. Yes, sir. Hospice care. In hospice care. We said goodbye to several people this year and one was um, my mom and um, Many of my friends from Friends Church flew to Iowa to be there for a funeral with us. Where have you seen this stuff? I'm coming over here. In this church and the support it gives the community through its work with the immigrant community, with Family Promise, with the youth group, 
and the way that we show our extravagant love, not just inside, but outside. Thank you. Somebody over here. Beth. Bentley running towards me with his arms open. Grandchild running toward you with his arms open. Anybody else? In contrast with so many in our own country, Canada has officially announced that they will receive 25,000 Syrian refugees and already have received close to half of them. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Any others? Go in the back and I'll cut back. Here you go. I see God every day at my bird feeder outside my window and I just I'm in awe and wonder of all the beauty and diversity. Thank you. When we hug one another here, it's a bigger sign of how much we care about each other. Seeing a man at Lowe's grabbing a cart and pushing it to a man who is having a very hard time walking so that he had a brace to lean on. Sorry, I'm going to go over here in just one second. I missed that. Uh, in the eyes of the doctor who keeps me healthy. Thank you. I'm going to go over here and then cut back for one more. Let's take a couple more. From a later note. Justice Kennedy and the other Supreme Court justices and ones. Okay. Right here. If y'all both want to go, we'll take these last two. I see the love of God in you, in your care for the people, not only in this church, but for around the world. Thank you. For the return of a wayward son. Thank you, everybody. We could keep going. Fuller picture, you see? Fuller picture. And every single glimpse that you've given into this embodiment of how big God is, is spot on in different ways. So I'm going to leave us with another question to consider for the year coming up. For 2016, how can we be the Word of God in 2016 so that people can see it how can we be all the stuff that we're talking about in 2016 so that people can see it all right so a couple of quick stories for you as I try to wrap this up today I want to tell you about Renita Lampkin she's the pastor of st. John's African Methodist Episcopal Church in st. Charles Missouri and she says I'm compelled by the fact that the church has so many opportunities to be the presence of light and life and love, and too often we reject those opportunities. And she shares a story from her own congregation where there was a young man who died of an alcohol-induced seizure. And he had been very active in the church for a while, but then he was estranged at the time of his death hadn't been coming around a whole lot. And the main reason why he had distanced himself from the church was because people were judging him based on his appearance and how he carried himself. Sagging pants, wearing a hat, and all these judgments started to pile up on him and he didn't come around anymore. And the pastor, uh, Lampkin, was remembering that when she made a pastoral care visit one time to his mom's house, and he was there, that when she was done visiting with his mom, he insisted that he walk her to her car, the pastor, so that when they got to her car, he could unbutton his shirt and show her a tattoo of Jesus on his chest. And he said, um, I have such a hard time keeping him in me that I have to keep him on me so that I'll remember. That's what he'd been convinced of. And now this person... Lamkin was saying, was lying, laying in a coffin and people are disputing whether he should be buried in a suit or these other clothes that he wears. And she's going, have we shamed this generation that much? 
Romans 8.35 says, Who shall separate us from the love of God? And so often when we hear that scripture, we think about me. What shall separate me from the love of God? What shall separate me from the love of God? I want to make sure that I've got my plot, that I'm all set. And we get to thinking that way so much that we are assured that when, then we begin to look at others who don't look like us, think like us, talk like us, act like us, and go, I'm sorry that you have been separated because I'm good. And all of a sudden, we start to embody things that divide and separate. And we don't embody things that represent the very love that no one can be separated from. And so the pastor, Lemkin, has this one last lesson. We have to be willing to care less about what other people think about us and only be concerned about what people are thinking about God through us. When people see us, what do they see? All right. So last thing. I'm wearing jeans today. And, you know, I got up this morning and I went, all right, people are still in the holiday spirit, a little bit at least. They're going to be thinking a little bit more informally. They don't want to get back to the formality of church just yet. Don't wear your robe. So if you don't wear your robe, what do you wear? Well, uh, I guess you could wear a suit. That would make Walter Birch happy. Um, <laughs> but that's a little bit too formal too, maybe. Maybe you should wear just a nice, nice pants. You know, maybe, a, maybe, you wear, maybe you wear a tie. And I went, no, uh, I'm not going to do that. Today, just for today... I'm going to wear jeans, and I'll tell you why. It has to do with, years ago, there was a woman who came to service on a Sunday morning. Her name's Jamie, and she didn't want to be here. She came here because her partner said, you've got to come to church, and so she came reluctantly. The church where she, Jamie, grew up had burned her bad because when it came out that she was gay, they said, well, then the light of Christ cannot be in you. And so she said, well, then I'm out. And you can't blame her. And so she came here, reluctantly. She said, I'll go, but I'm not going to dress up. And so she came with her jeans and her t-shirt, and she sat in the chair with her arms crossed, and we sang in this place, and there was a message of hope in this place, and we passed the peace together in this house, and then communion happened. And at communion... She came forward, she cupped her hands, and she received the bread, and she smiled. And I had the chance after the service and in the weeks that followed to get to know her a little bit better. And she said, the reason why I came up for communion after not receiving it for so many years was because you, the preacher, you were wearing jeans. And she said, I thought if he can wear jeans in here, then surely there's a place for me here. And surely God loves me too. So, Madeline LaEngel, she writes, We do not draw people to Christ by loudly discrediting what they believe, by telling them how wrong they are and how right we are, but by showing them a light that is so lovely that they want with all their hearts to know the source of it. So this is what I'm hoping will be our New Year's resolution for 2016. My hope for all of you. When you look in the mirror, I want for you to see the image of God looking back at you. When you look in the mirror, I want for you to see a child of God looking back at you. I want for you to see the light of Christ shining back at you so brightly that you would be set free to be able to see that same light shining in the people around you. Especially those people, election year folk, who don't look like you, think like you, talk like you, act like you. The world will know that it is being redeemed when the church points to its Redeemer by being a redeemed people. So be life, be light, be love, and the world will see the living God 
shining in you and in themselves and in each other, and all flesh shall see it together. Let peace on earth begin, O God, and let it begin with me. And let all God's people say together, Amen. Amen.